Okay, so the next line is part 107. It's got less data because I this is where I started dividing it up into little sections, okay? So line 18A3C, NASA Starshine, Graphite Fiber, Mirror, Skyhook, Space Dev, Stars, Stars SYS, Wow SETI. Again, it's based on the alien signal. The Google is 823.5294. That's the answer to the math equation found in it. I Google Starshine Satellite and because that's what came up first. And actually, let's go over the tags here. This is what came up in this video, okay? Tags are Ted Stern of Composite Optic Optics, Inc. of San Diego, California. Student Tracked Atmospheric Research Satellite Heuristic International Networking Experiment. The Goddard Space Flight Center Flight Dynamics Facility, Starshine 2 and 3, Retro Flect Reflectors, Laser Ranging, NRL, Starsys, Starsys Lightweight Biaxial Gimbal Actuators, Space Dev, Starsys, became, um, Starsys and Space Dev are combined now as one company. It used to be Starsys and now it's called Space Dev, okay? Skyhook is a space elevator that NASA developed as a theory. And believe it or not, I have a theory of my own. Okay? So let's get to it. This thing here is what some students built. It's called the Starshine Satellite. That's a cool little thing here. It's too hard to see all the little things anyways. But here it is here and there's all these little diagrams. Okay? The Starshine stands for Student Tracked Atmospheric Research Satellite Heuristic International Networking Experiment. Ugh, that's a long word. Series of satellites were, where student participatory missions sponsored by NRL. Starshine 1 was launched in 1999. It was a spherical satellite that carried nearly 900 small mirrors polished by the students from around the world. Isn't that cool? These little... All the students polished those mirrors. I thought that was neat. Um, there was over 20,000 students that participated. This from 18 countries. They tracked the satellite through the glinting of sunlight off the mirrors and networked the data collection over the internet. The students used the observations to calculate air drag, solar activity, and other orbit-related properties. The surfaces of these satellites were nearly covered with small mirrors polished by students for ground-based visual observation in twilight. Small retroflectors were also being placed on the surface to support laser ranging NRL, has organized student observing activities around the world to participate. Starshine 2 and 3 also had a system to spin the satellite to improve the flash rate and included a few laser retroreflectors to introduce the students to SLR. The satellite were built from spare flight hardware. Students participated by polishing the mirrors used on the satellite. Okay, so Starshine on station update was November 4th, 2002. That was the posting I got from them. A new volunteer, Starshine on station team, is working on a concept for attaching a lightweight controllable mirror to an unused handrail on the outside of the International Space Station, ISS and using the mirror to send brief daylight visible Morse code messages to students around the world in the various languages of the countries they are building the ISS. This is Ted Stern from Composite Op Optics of San Diego, California. He's holding the graphite fiber reinforced composite structure of a half meter diameter two kilogram mirror. Some sort of mirror that he and his colleagues have offered to provide us for the project for free. He's preparing to replicate the surface of this mirror to a flatness of approximately one wavelength of a light at 530 nanometers. This mirror will provide flashes of sunlight of equivalent stellar magnitudes between minus six and minus seven, depending on the geometry of the sun mirror observer sight lines and the distance from the IS ISS to the observer. These flashes will be bright enough to be visible to the average observer in broad light, daylight under reasonably clear sky conditions. 
This mirror proves to be very important, so keep an eye on that. This gentleman here is Mark Bailey of Starsis Research Corporation on the right, and Jill Moore, or Gilmore, director of the Starshine On Station project on the left. With one of Starsis lightweight biaxial gimbal actuators that Mark has committed to provide to this project for free. Again, their website's www.azinet.com forward slash starshine. Commands to the point this actuator to reflect a beam of sunlight to each school will be communicated to a U.S. Naval Academy amateur radio receiver in the Starshine on Station instrument package. Bob Bruni, Bruniga of the Naval Academy will supervise a team of amateurs around the globe to transmit these messages to his receiver. Paul Grazzini, president of, of Analytical Graphics Inc., has committed his company to calculate the appropriate control angles required to point a beam of sunlight and dither the mirror to send Morse code messages to each selected school in turn. You guys need to pay attention to this data. I know it's dry, but this mirror is going to be very, very important for a future, um, future thing that NASA is going to use, if my idea works. Additional reports will be published from time to time on this web page, highlighting other members of the Starshine on Station team and their contributions to our project. We will also report on NASA's decision about whether to accept our offer as soon as that occurs. So February 2nd, 2012, 12.41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can see I'm getting tired because I can hardly type. My thoughts. As soon as I saw the graphite fiber reinforced composite structure, of a half meter diameter two kilogram mirror used in Starshine, I got very excited. It can be used for my ideas for the skyhook or space elevator that NASA in theory wants to build, but hasn't figured out how to do so. As far as I know, as of February 2012, there's absolutely nothing stating publicly that they've figured out how to build this sky, this sky elevator, space elevator, sorry. I come up with a way to do it, but I'll explore that more in lines 18O, 18P, and 18Q. I, I've divided it into three different parts, and I've actually designed a space elevator for you guys to build. Um, I tell you how to do it, what it needs, and uh, I don't know if it'll work, but you never know. February 2, th two <laughs> Sorry, February 2nd, 2012, 1.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is now 1.30 a.m. February the 4th. Anyways, my thoughts continued after researching more data. Keywords that stand out from the article about graphite, the graphite mirror. Paul Graziani, president of Vanical Graphics, has committed his company to calculate the appropriate control angles required to point a beam of sunlight and dither the mirror to send Morse code messages to each selected school in turn. You're going to need those calculations in order to do the um, sky elevator, okay? Star Stitch Research Corporation, questions and comments about the project should be emailed to Jill Moore or jillmoore12 at aol.com or telephone him at 719-488-0721, okay? So Starshine 3 Entry Bulletin, January 24, 2003. We now believe that Starshine 3 burned up in the Earth's upper atmosphere sometime between 0504 and 0519 UTC on January 21, 2003. It had made 7434 revolutions around the Earth between the date of its launch from Kodiak, Alaska. On September 29, 2001, and its fiery end on July, January 21, 2003. The exact location of its flameout is still uncertain. They still haven't found it yet, that I know of. But we know that its final half orbit carried it northeasterly direction over the states of California, Nevada, Idaho, and Montana in the U.S., then across the provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba in western Canada. Then, in an easterly direction across Hudson's Bay, Baffin Island, and the southern tip of Greenland. So if you ever find any of these funny-looking little mirrors, give NASA a call. 
There's the final reentry assessment, Starshine 3, right there. U.S. Uh, last updated January 22nd, 2003. This is the last time they had contact with it. The U.S. Naval Network and Space Operations Command, um, 0519 plus one minute. So, location 67.1 degrees north, 51.5 degrees west. That's the last time they saw it. There's the pattern of its orbit. Next is the Goddard Space Flight Center Flight Dynamics Facility that comes up. Location 49.488 degrees north and 6.805 degrees east. That was the last half orbit ground trace. I'm not sure what that means. But anyways. So then I googled the Starsys Research Corporation. I want to know what it was. There's their website snapshot. Oh, hold on. A little bit bigger looking there and looks like that. Okay. That's their physical address. There's their mailing address if you need to get a hold of them. These are the different links that came up. Quote, the merger of Space Dev and Starsys represents a major milestone for our company and for our industry and brings us to a new plateau in our corporate development said Mark N. Sarangelo, Chief Executive Officer and Vice Chairman of Space Dev. By combining the broad range of high-tech space product development and production capabilities of Starsys with Space Dev's capabilities for designing and building high-performance, low-cost satellites, spacecraft, and propulsion systems, we are creating a dynamic mid-sized company focused on filling the expanding need for affordable and rapid access to space. Again, I want you to re to remember the companies that come up in these videos are from the Well Study data, so I'm assuming that they are capable of helping build this UFO engine. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. That's the end of that section.